All right, good morning, folks. We're back up here at the barn on day number five with my sweetie here, Piper. Yesterday, we had a pretty good lesson with her. She stayed settled real good. She came up to me when I... Uh, Come in here to clean up the round pen a little bit and pull the feed rack out and, and uh, so we just went ahead and halted her up and got started and, and we went <coughs> we went uh, for about 30 minutes with her kept her real saddled did a little bit of groundwork a little bit of rail work and then we just kind of called it good from there just to try and build up that confidence in her and the ability to just settle down and, and relate. So this morning, I haven't done anything with her yet. We've just uh, come in here, I pulled the rack out, I kind of ignored her, and I'm standing here talking to you and just to see what she was gonna do. And she did come up, so we're gonna call that a win here this morning and we'll get her haltered up here and brush her out a little bit get her saddled up and see what today brings yesterday um, things went well yesterday for the most part but she did start regressing a little bit into that back and up mode again when I asked to bend her a little bit and when I got her up to the rail she was backing up a little bit so I need to try and do some things to correct that this morning so that I can finally get down on her and get and get a ride And this side, this side here was the most difficult side. But she just kind of flops back and forth. Sometimes she is a little, a little tough on this side, and sometimes she's tougher on the other side. The cost of being famous. Oh, it's even Carl. Yeah, he'll wait. <laughs> Normally, everybody's calling me about 8 o'clock in the morning or noon, and I don't usually get bothered too much when I'm up here. But... <clears throat> That's the difference between cinema quality movies and what we deal with in real life up here. She's just been, she's been kind of a tricky horse to figure out. You know, she came in here the first couple of days. She was real settled coming into the barn. Pretty settled on the first couple of days. But then I made the one error of using the rope on her. And it kind of set back our progression a little bit. Because of not knowing you know, I try to push these guys a little bit to see what they know and what they don't know and what's going to bother them so that I know where to go. But I didn't expect it to be 
as intense as it was with her and how much her level of trust is not there with people. And I still don't, you don't know if she, I don't think she still completely trusts me. The way some horses would be after this point in time. I, I think she's got a lot of try in her and I think she really wants to do it and wants to be with people and, and get along and learn how to do stuff like this, but she's just got so many skittish tendencies about her where her first reaction is, is leaving the country or not dealing with something rather than trusting me or somebody else to try and keep her out of trouble a little bit and and be okay with things. But <clears throat> you know, that's all the difference between what you see in the movies and what you see in real life sometimes with these horses. I don't really I don't really have the luxury of picking my scenes and and uh, you know making everything look horse whisper perfect for my next TV show. My stuff is just pretty much the way it is on what I do and the horses that I work with and the projects that I take on in order to keep my own horses fed. You know, and I've, I've told folks here and there that I don't have to make a living at this, at this stuff. And that way I can be a more honest and tell folks what I honestly think they need or their horse needs or whether they should be getting another horse or whatever and for the most part that's true you know I don't have to do this to make a living but I do have to do this to keep my own horses and groceries and myself eating at the same time so given a choice of my horses eating or me eating, I'd make sure my horses ate first, but I still kind of like to eat too once in a while. I'm going to go a little bit more with her today. I'm not going to be as tentative. as yesterday because I want to try and get her start to build up a little bit here where she can take a little bit more of everything and what we're doing and realize that I'm not getting any more aggressive I'm just building her up I'm just building her confidence up and getting her to figure out what things are Because yesterday we did most everything at a walk. Today, if she decides to trot out and spool herself up a little bit, she might hump around again today because she didn't feel the pressure that she had the first time we saddled her with the big saddle when she went storming around and pumped up the her belly and tighten those cinches up a little bit and then she started humping around a little bit and she might do that today too if she gets to trotting around here or something changes but 
não sei. Something for you guys to keep in mind when you're starting out this groundwork, it's real, real important that you start out slow with these horses. Everything should be started out at a walk. Nice and calm and easy. Get the basics down of following the direction of that lead, turning, stopping, backing up and stuff. You can always raise that level up and get more speed as you go along. But if you go out there with your first time or two of doing this groundwork and you got this supporting rein here and you're just whipping that thing around like a frickin' whirly bird, and getting them to really get into it and get faster and do this and do that like you see on TV, then you're causing more problems than you're making, than you're, than you're doing good. Especially with a horse like this, that where you get a little bit too animated, you know, off the bat and get her scared, then she starts thinking, well, I gotta charge around here at Mach 1 every time that we come out here. And then you got to go back, and it's twice as hard to try and fix things and get things settled down to where she understands that, no, we don't have to go around here at Mach 1 all the time. All we have to do is just follow the direction and work. See, already she wants to try and get herself blowing snot and dirking around here for whatever reason.
All right, this morning, I'm gonna pull out my crash test dummies here. And we're gonna see possibly what might be up the line for me when I start getting ready to crawl on her and mess around here with her. Basically, I use these on every single horse that I go to get on for the first time. The little ones weigh about 25 pounds. It just gives them something on their back that flops around like a pair of legs, a little more weight, a little more shiftiness to deal with and starts figuring out what it's going to be like to carry somebody around. I also like to use these things exactly for crash test practice. Just in case somebody comes off, they understand that something falling off their back is not something that they have to get upset about. And they can shut down if they get carried away. I can pull their head around, get them shut down, relax, and figure things out without having to get upset about things. start sending these off the opposite side. I got to make sure I keep my hand up here on her shoulder just in case she jumps sideways here. She's not going to jump on top of me. Yeah, she's doing better than I thought she would, too. It's really kind of hard to nail down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up so they got a chance to fall off while she's moving. Her groundwork is still not real good, but this is part of my lesson and part of what I have to do to get that one rain stop in and get her to figure out how to shut down and not worry about something falling off when she's moving. So we're going to send her around here a little bit. You always work these pants to the inside so you can pull her nose towards you. And do a one rain stop and get those hind quarters faced away and not let them get carried away with themselves. It's a little bit tougher to do with this, with my new Colt saddle here because I have a rough out seat in the saddle. So these things don't slide off as easily as they did on my other slick seat saddle. But I like the rough out seat now working Colts because it gives me a little more security too. Keeps my ass in the saddle if they start to get a little bit hinky. Good girl. 
Yeah, you wouldn't have thought that yesterday or the day before, would you? Sometimes you have an aha moment. And you start making a little headway and narrowing things down and put a little more a little more pressure on them and they start to accept things a little better. You just never know sometimes. Just like that. Don't hurt you. You're good. There again, that's the difference between working on the left side that she's fairly used to having people around, built up a little more confidence and a little more tolerance for things, as opposed to this right-hand side that's not quite as seasoned in what we want to do. So we might have to work a little bit harder Ooh. on this side. All right, we got 24 minutes there on this first lesson. We're going to go ahead and stop it right there, and then we'll continue on on this other side.